All right, guys. Hello, and welcome back to another session of our Unexplored 2 playthrough. Which we've been having a lot of fun with. Um, by the way, you guys have been leaving some nice comments. It seems like a lot of uh, new people are checking out the channel here and uh, like watching the series, and that is really great to see. A lot of enthusiasm there. So, welcome everyone, and I'm glad to hear you guys are enjoying it. I'm looking forward to putting out some more of these. Uh, that sent this sentiment will get out there a little late because I'm actually recording this one a few days before it's likely to go up on the channel. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, also, we have a pretty great community over on Discord, so if you guys want to chat about the game with other people, um, feel free to check that out. You can get there from tonehack.net slash discord. And I also wanted to say, last episode we hit like a pretty big bug, um, but we got past that. And I'm recording this five days after release, and they put up another bug fix patch today. So that's like three patches in the past five days. So their like commitment and dedication to making this game great is uh, very visible and on display there. And I really love to see that. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this game is going to be much more polished and bug free as time goes on. And the things about this game that are like good are like so good and so worthwhile that I personally like am very willing to overlook um, a lot of the, the rough edges and the, the bugs like that. But I can see why someone might, you know, be turned off by that. And you guys might want to return in like a month or two and all these, uh, much more of these bugs are, you know, fleshed out and uh, fixed. But I still have a great time playing this now, as you can probably tell. Yeah, let's get back into our run here. By the way, as I uh, have often repeated, I do now have a Patreon, so if you guys want to support me and the channel, you can check that out over at patreon.com slash tonehack. I'd appreciate that. Uh, we just got out of this little eclipse dungeon here, which was a lot of fun, and we got like another healing potion and some loot. Uh, we're up to four healing potions, which is great. We have some sigils. But, as I said, that one bug did put us in a weird part of the map, so we need to get to safety somehow. Um, there is supposedly a Serpent Gate here, which we could use to fast travel back to Haven, so that's what I would like to try and do. Um, oh yes, there is heat, like, everywhere where we're at now, which is why I'm traveling at night. And we don't have much healing, either. We have the healing potions, but no food. I'd like to not use, um the potions if I can avoid it. So hopefully we can find some some healing, like some some meat, some uh, some you know uh, turnips and mushrooms, that good stuff that we get to eat. I don't remember if we went to this farm, we did, because I can see we went this way. Alright, we're gonna start working our way down. I guess it would be nice to see if we can cross here. I wouldn't mind checking out these towns. One of these towns might accept the copper mine gift, which is down here. I mean, that's still a pretty long way. I don't know what the range is for that. They they want to be near the mines before they accept your gift, but we could try that um, if we do end up meeting any of them. First, I'm going to head to this way shrine. Um, this is a safe place to camp and rest. I don't think we actually need to rest, but there's also a fire sigil here that we can take, which deactivates the way shrine, so we don't get the, the warmth bonuses from it. But, this is not such an awkward part of the map that I'm not too concerned about that. Because we probably won't be coming back here, specifically. Unless we hear like a cool rumor or something, who knows, we might come back. Uh, Neil wipes away some sweat. Truly, I wish I could help out, but you're no good business, my friend, so no deal. This is a farmer, so he may have turnips, which I would gladly accept right now. Um, and that is a great start. You can see where all of our social um, bonuses are really paying off, where I get four redraws here. Uh, one, two, three. We could almost just redraw to the success right now. Um, it will add a negative token to the pool. Um, at, this is a great success token. Playing this adds three success tokens, which actually makes it harder to get the great success if we want it, even though if it makes it easier for us to get a normal success. Great success probably means that we can get a... Um, I'll take this one, add another great success to the pool. Great success means that we will get, there it is, I believe in this encounter, um, better deals while trading. Yeah, I'll give you a discount. 
Okay, yeah, he's got some berries and some turnips. Oh, and a water skin. It'll save us from heat. It says you need to refill your source of water. Hmm. I, I don't really want to give up anything up for that, if I'm being completely honest. So when I used water skins before, I couldn't figure out how to refill them. One of the things is if you're in like a desert where you actually need the water skin, there's not a lot of water around. We're actually in a plains right now, which should have water. And there's actually a coast here. So I wonder if we stick to the coast so we can refill this readily. Um, I kind of want to try this. I'd have to give up the firewood. I guess we'll go ahead and do that. And then let's get, I want to get like all this food. What do we have for trading? Not a whole lot anymore. We've traded away a lot of our valuables. But I do have spider silk. Okay. One less berry. So that spider silk is getting us um, three turnips and a berry. I don't know if I quite need all of that, but... Better be safe than sorry right now, I guess. Uh, we can actually offer something to here and it'll give us some kind of benefit. I think the benefit it gives us will be along the lines of um, less presence buildup from using fire magic. It might give us something else, but I don't really want to give them our healing right now. Hey, we got some, oh shoot, I forgot there are turrets in here. All right, well, let's camp. Uh, camping here is safe because it is a way shrine. Let's go ahead and heal up. So I have two more things of turnips, so I can actually tank some of these turrets if I want to. Is there anything up here? This might be a fake wall, it's hard to tell. So I have a scroll that supposedly turns deactivates turrets. Let's run down here and try using that. Oops, wrong button. Disable all nearby turrets. It says equip. not being used. That's weird. I tried hitting my X button too. Oh, I just took some damage unfortunately. Um, you know what's awesome is our armor is saving us right now. When hit by fire damage prevents all fire damage for five seconds. Um, I can only absorb that a bit but that's helping us a bit. In that case... <laughs> I will just be very careful here. Well, maybe not careful, I'm just gonna run through like a maniac. Pass the turrets. Uh, okay, we're about to summon Screaming Skulls, that's not good. The well might have the key, or the pedestal figurine. Seems like I can kind of hide from the turrets like outside of their peripheral. They also don't have the best aim. I want to use the pedestal. Here we go. Dude, that ward is saving us really well. This is a pretty dangerous area. Oh shoot, I put my weapon away. That was bad. Alright. I'm gonna appreciate this moment of relative safety. Any searching to do here? 
Alright, well, what the heck is downstairs? Inscription clearly indicates that this the devices in this chamber power the magic hearth in this area. Well, I want the flame sigil, so sorry, magic hearth. I'm not sure if these pots will ever have anything in them unless they're like a clear part of like a puzzle. But I'm checking for now anyways. Oh, that's definitely not a secret door. Because this falls off a cliff. This often indicates that a chest can appear and I wonder if it's from lighting that torch. So we can kind of maneuver around the turrets. They only have like a certain a certain arc where they can uh, detect you. Look at all this. Oh, I guess a lot of this is kind of plain mundane. Um, what do we have here though? Plus one use travel cloak. A provision bag, cooking gear, we already have those. A dust devil wrap. This is a legacy item. We, we got one of these earlier, right? I don't know if that one was a legacy item. I think this is probably quite valuable. Makes me want to take it. Um... I wonder if the legacy status is going to make it more valuable than the shield. Let's drop the shield and grab that. I'll grab the travel cloak too. The shield had an unidentified quality, but I'm carrying three shields right now. Just because I wanted to try and trade some. Oh, I do need to equip another one now. Alright, let's wait for this turret to look away and I'm going to make a run for it. Alright, that wasn't... Too bad, all things considered. Wait, do we ever figure out what this does? I wonder. I actually need to heal again anyways. So, we're not completely safe here anymore. And I want to wait for night so we can travel. All right, I think that was worth a flame sigil for sure. Sigils are really nice things to have. Um, I believe that will trade for like a ton if we wanted to trade, but it's what powers up our gear at forges as well. All right, let's start working our way down. There's a low hill and a lake here. There's double rain and double rain hazard. Let's go put our ring cloak on. Double rain might give us minus hope. Um, let's see. Wait, no, because we're going to block one and then get wet. I think if we got wet a second time, it might be minus hope. Not 100% sure, but I think that might be the case. Um, there's folk here and food at this hill, so let's stop here. Stop right there and put them up. A robbery, so these guys are bad. Uh, we get four rerolls again though, but there's one negative token in here because of that dirty cloak we're wearing. I think if you get the great success here, that they give you food. This doesn't look like the easiest check, so I probably won't try to get... Well, it was just given to us, so let's take it. 
I wasn't gonna like go out of my way to get that one. Yeah, they give us way bread. Pretty awesome. Alright, so there's a some kind of stone. You're pretty sure the view is amazing when the sun is up. Um Okay, so the, oh, there's turnips and rabbits over there. I might have to walk around the other way. If we rest till the morning, that lookout can give us some tips about if there's stuff around. Check these bones. No, it doesn't look like it. These are some easy hazards to avoid. will probably run to the edge once I start hurting them. Alright. We got some meat. Oh uh, yeah, and there's some turnips here. Did I get the harvesting skill? I did. Find more food and herbs. Uh, that was one of the things we got when we leveled up. That should let us right up here again. I think we're gonna wanna cook this meat. It currently lasts for two days. I suppose if we have like a one day travel event, we could, we could cook it later. But I think we wanna rest of the day anyways. Or like, spend time so we can use that lookout would be nice. Oh, we need to start a fire to prep the meal. Looks like you can only repair stuff by the fire too. That dried us as well. Our risk of an encounter went way up too. The south you spot scavenging carrion birds circling a specific location. Last time we went to a location with carrion birds, it had a lot of cool stuff in it, if you remember. To the north you spot a small column of smoke rise to the horizon. That might be the traitor. Mm hmm. Or the farm. I think we're at high risk of an encounter if we chill here. So we gained oriented from the lookout point, ignore the first effects of loss while journeying, and we just got energized from that stone. Protects against fatigue and reduces weapon cooldowns by 33%. Remove when fatigued. Um, so that heat fatigues us, so it might protect us from that. Keep. Let's go here, then hop over to the keep. Let's see what this flock of birds is all about. So that water skin is going to prevent one of these heats, and the, the energized status should prevent the fatigue. I guess we could just rest. It looks like we're getting pretty high to a risk of an encounter, but whoops. I wanted to join your camp. Medium. I'm gonna have to wait like multiple times. Hmm. Got lucky. I figure like these guys might help us fight any intruders anyways. Depending on what it is, like they I think they'll naturally aggro each other if I just stay out of the way. So now there's nothing on the way here, perfect. Resource and food.
things feel easy, but sometimes they get you. These would be really dangerous if they were like twice as long. That would be interesting to see. Not every thing you come across has to be like an extremely difficult task. So. Too many like really deep challenges in this game kind of kills the pacing for me a bit. Especially if you're just trying to like get from point A to point B on the map, but they're like two distant points. Looks like that was just a dead end. I'm not missing anything here, am I? I don't think so. I like this overhead view. I don't think this was always in the game. It's not great for like playing the game all the time, but it, it, it's really nice for combat and like doing stuff like this. And also like sometimes like I can see what's behind these trees now when I can't in the ISO view. It's really nice. The bloom's nature is obscured by the darkness. Wait until tomorrow. Root attuned. Use root magic in this area without getting presents. That's just the entrance down there. Right? Are these mushrooms harvestable? Hmm. Should we check the bloom until morning? Flowering figment. Uh, the mysteries, uh, the mysterious bloom climbs high with sensitive tendrils that seem to resonate with unseen forces. The air tingles with energy, and the mystic fragrances the bloom emits trigger all sorts of half-forgotten memories by all who uh, behold it. Um, this looks like a lore fortune test that I get two bonuses to: one from formal education, and one from wisdom. Hello. Let's touch the pedal. You let your mind drift. Um, costing time is fine because we probably want to get back to night sooner than later anyways. Um, great success. Oh, I wonder if we want the great success though. Let's fish for it. So I have some rerolls. All right, I'm just going to take the normal success. You empty your mind making room for new sparks of insights. Ooh. Get some sparks. Awesome. I do wonder what a great success would have given us there. We'll probably come across that again at some point. So some like magical... Oh, your stuff. Some kind of magic spirit plant. I like it. Dude, that forging skill is awesome right now. Nothing edible. We just got like six out of seven or something. Normally your your success rate for getting those is much lower. How do we leave again this way? We have berries that spoil in three days. So many turnips. And with our, our cooking gear, these restore 12 health. I feel so much better now. We're back to the heat issue, but um, we have our water skin, so I'm just going to go here. So our water skin will block that. Yeah, there, this thing connects to a lot of places. Or one node from that town, too. Caves often have cool stuff in them. I feel like we should try and check out these caves and definitely the town. Um, but we're at a, a keep first, so let's definitely go here. Hmm. 
some kind of spooky skull chest. I see multiple entrances and exits there. Let's explore the outside first. Where's a key, but I don't think it's the only way to get up. Oh, heck yeah, more spark. Lock, so these are just supposed to get lock picked. I don't think we actually have to do that test because it looks like we can just walk in from the front. Oh shoot, I missed. That was one evasive plant. See that thing dodge my strike? Oh, I almost walked into another one. Caused rain before, right? Already raining. I guess they did nothing. I was watching someone else play this and I thought I saw those drop sparks, so I was kind of curious. There might have just been sparks there already. And they were like over overlapped with them or something. Unlock. Copper lock. So that thing up top wasn't a chest. I wonder what that was. Is it just decoration or is there more to it? the mysteries of this game. Dude, I hate these puzzles. I can never get through them without taking damage. just lead to here. So if we had a way to open that, which I don't think we have sufficient force. Let's skip the other puzzle. See another copper lock. outside. Borrow's Kiss. Highly appreciated by those who venture out into the wild where a mere misstep could cause grave illness, especially for spelunkers who might even happen upon a nest of poisonous spiders. Remove poison and gain poison immunity. Cool. We, we already have one of those, but I'll gladly accept another. Hello. This inscription details part of the legacy or legendary life of Judge Bernhild. Um, we had a that area with the eclipse puzzle where we had to be night and we stepped on the thing and opened the door. That said something that this um, this region that we're in had something to do with Judge Bernhild. It says many warriors followed Bernhild from then on, forming the Crimson Banner. 
It was an effective fighting force against the Empire, and they won every battle. Clans appreciated the effort, but they were not keen on joining forces with them. Many years of infighting made them weary and distrustful. So Judge Burnhill seemed to be some kind of warrior leader. When a keep was liberated, Burnhill decreed that in order to defeat the Empire, they should strike at their heart. This decree was so powerful and compelling that many who heard it, warriors and folk alike, threw off their skins and took up arms, becoming immortals. Burnhild with the immortals and the Crimson Banner then marched towards the capital. Threw off their skins and became immortals? Hmm. After many trials, Bernhild, with her remaining eight companions, breached the gate to the capital. There, Bernhild, with her eyes open, was struck down. As they fell to the ashen ground, five wept, two fled, and one turned. Hmm, so they didn't do so hot. One turned. Does that mean turned evil? I wonder if we'll meet any of these people. Two immortals returned to the realms. They brought Judge Burnhild with them and constructed a tomb in a large cave. They laid the judge to rest and left never to be seen again. On clear nights, folk can still hear a voice invoking the Crimson Vow. Oh, she's right there. The legendary Judge Bernhild is entombed here. We learned something else too, right? I think it updated her quest. Oh, legends. Oh, I can come back here to see the legends. Interesting. We'll come back and read these when we get like more parts to them. Oh, I haven't poked around on this. New characters start with stealth. Armor is available in this village. Interesting. We need to read this. Like before entering a village. Like learn learn the culture of the people we're visiting. I thought it said we updated a quest, but maybe I'm wrong. I want to pay tribute here just because it seems like a fancy place. Poison immunity. Very cool. So that required a copper key, and there's a thing downstairs that required a copper key. Okay, did we look in here? Yeah, it said the poison uh, potion. Oh, all right. <laughs> we have an answer. Break all the pots. This is a well-made ring, so we can put a, a sigil into it. This is really good. That, that, that's great for trading at the very least. But we can also make it magic. It's actually a pretty epic find from a random jar I almost didn't break. Dude, if, if I ever find like one thing in a, a video game like this, now I have to open everything. <laughs> Which 
I kind of hate, but finding stuff is cool. At least, at least this game doesn't just put like pots all over the damn place. It seems like you can find like some pretty good stuff. Uh, let's see if there's another way around there. We didn't explore the right half of this. But yeah, some games just like fill rooms with props and then you want to break them all just to get like a couple gold pieces. Back down here. Oh my god. This took a lot of damage. Oh, there's the copper key. These are bad rats. This one looks easier to get through. There's not as many jets. I don't know how you're supposed to dodge that. It looked like it pauses for a decent amount of time, so am I supposed to wait for like the long pause? Maybe? I think it's safer to come back from upstairs. Try and see if that did anything. I also haven't seen any water here to replenish our our water skin, unfortunately. Uh, more details of the legendary life of Judge Burnhild. Uh, many warriors followed Burnhild from then on, forming the Crimson Banner. Okay, these look like the same things. But it looks like that's continued from like a story we haven't heard yet. Mm. Yeah, two immortals return to the realms. Yada yada yada. You know the you know the story. And an empty chest. Not cool. But maybe all the treasures in the pots. Nope. So we gain nothing from that room. Let's go ahead and eat. Let's wait till night. So we can travel in the safety of night. So I don't know if you noticed, but downstairs the pots regenerated and they stayed away here. I think that's one, it's probably because those ones are like coded to not have drops in them, but these ones are. I don't know how you, we can use that to our, that knowledge to our advantage to like find more loot. Because it kind of requires you to break pots either way, but uh, interesting. Legendary Judge Burnhild is entombed here. Should we go to town first? Kind of out of the way, but... Hmm. I guess we don't really need anything from town. There's not, nothing we really need to trade for. If they had a forge, that would be cool, but I don't think most towns have forges. Who is this? Clan Jabbar? Let's read about them. Creativity, skill, and craftsmanship are highly valued among the members of Clan Javar. They tend to be carefree people who enjoy the lighter side of life and refuse to be drawn into politics. Substance abuse and alcoholism are very common among the Jabarians and completely accepted as a way of dealing with life's worries. Yo, I was on board with them until that last part. That's a little concerning. We need to get these people some help. Uh, they have an alchemist. Hunters, adds background, tribal hunter. I think that means if we start a character as one of them.
All right, let's go check out this tomb first. Storm Folk Hazard. A heart root spirit, wanderlust, negates a fatigue hardship when traveling through the wilderness once per journey. This item is automatically used while traveling, has five uses. That sounds cool. Well, that can be repaired. These float flowers don't disappear. Miserable status, I don't really want, even though haste it sounds pretty nice. Armor doesn't care about my turnips. These did tip, tip the scales a little bit. there. Storm Globe gets us close. So like all of my turnips, the Storm Globe, and these things, for the Heartroot Spirit, I'll do it. Does that have to be equipped? No. It sounds pretty useful. In the grand scheme of things, turnips aren't actually worth much. I mean, they'll keep us alive, <laughs> which has a lot of value to it. Saw me. Oh, these ones get mad at me for attacking them. Plants are not pushovers. Got a bit of fur. It's a little spikier. Look a little different, I think. Good to know. The Mercy Mausoleum. Enemies, shelter, hazard, food. I'm all in. Sounds like my kind of party. Day 99. We have almost been adventuring for 100 days in game time. I gotta say, it's actually pretty cool how... Damn, we got screwed out of a, a turn up there, even with our foraging skills. <laughs> I, I could have used a pick-me-up there after just trading all of ours away. I kind of like how the game has forced us to travel at night. something I'd normally avoid, but the this is actually an area where traveling during the day is much, much worse. All that that heat.
It's dark in here. What is that? Is this going to be better lit during the day, I wonder? Wait, it is day? What time is it? That's a little weird. I don't have a torch or any light source other than my staff. Actually wasn't too bad. We got hit once and we got this infected thing, which means we can't heal off of food, unfortunately. It'll wear off in one day. What else is out here? I'm just gonna lower everything back to the front if we have to fight again. Pull my water skin here. It's refilled. Must have refilled automatically. And so those are some bones. Test. This one seems important. I'm glad I get two rerolls. An ancient inscription adorns the wall. One glyph indicates something about something which is forbidden. You're quite certain about that. Yeah, we better figure out what's forbidden here. Don't open the tomb. Tis forbidden. You're struck with a sudden insight. Okay, so we got clarity. Is there a great success here? No, just normal successes. Uh, we're rolling really well here. Probably gonna get this without using a reroll. Yep. That's it. You can read the entire inscription. Thou shall not steal. What is this thing? I'm afraid. Ah, oh, there's a rat. I'm like, what is stepping over here? those skeletons came to life. Is this stealing? Alright, we got a pal. This is a dead end over here. So this guy gives us... Reduce receive damage by five, movement is slowed, and I can cast Stone Strike. As long as I'm near him and he seems to be going off who knows where. That's all that's over here, huh? Well. Oh, I want to try that puzzle box now that we have clarity. No modifiers. Hmm. 
Dude, let's let's Aww. do the puzzle box. I want to see what this thing's all about. I want to get the great success. That's going to cost a lot of spark, isn't it? Let's just take the normal success if we can. The satisfying click, the box opens, revealing its treasures. So we got some meringue coins. Small metal disc of the ancient meringue used as a trading item. Although they do not have to seem like a uh, have to seem or seem to have a real purpose in this world anymore. Nice and shiny relic of the ancient past. Tradable item of high value. Oh shoot. Okay. That was cool. <laughs> so I, I I attacked that pillar and it summoned the skeletons, but it also acted as a f flame channel for my staff. So I was able to attack them with fire using the staff, which seemed to be quite effective. This tomb has a heavy stone lid. Opening it will be quite difficult. It also looks like that lit up the dungeon, which is nice. Grip the lid firmly and muster all of your strength. I think we definitely want to get in here, even if it costs us some spark. The lid bends to your will and yields. Um, thief! Okay, that's a lot of tradable goods. And what is this? Judgment. Bronze. A legendary longsword tailor-made for Judge Burnhild. The dead are buried with their weapons so that even in death they might fight for what they believe in. So we just got like a legendary sword. This item has a specific value for clan sand riders. You can gift it to them. It's a clan heirloom. It's well made so we can put sigils in it. The first flame sigil counts double. It has unidentified qualities. Minor legacy. Returns to Haven when the Wayfarer dies once. Interesting. Then it only once. I haven't seen that before. That's kind of cool. Bulk is one plus three inventory slots. We got to take this thing, right? Hmm. I'm going to ditch the rough guard for now. Maybe we can come back for it later. It's a legacy item. So I was holding on to it. Probably has quite a bit of value too, but we want to take this sword for sure. I have another shield. Did I drop something else too? I want to keep the climbing gear because we were heading towards a climbing area and I think this stuff feels rare. I guess we've run into it twice. The boots aren't useful right now, but they are once we start getting back towards Haven, if we don't take the, like any forest area, these are like essential. I could ditch the bedroll. We don't really use this much, but when you do use it, it's quite important. Considering ditching the cooking gear, Although that was a bigger consideration when I had like a million turnips. Now that I have like one, it'd be nice to keep it. Because it makes them heal us more. It's, it's either the cooking gear or the water skin. I think we want the travel cloak for now too. All right, goodbye water skin. We're just gonna be traveling by day. I'm gonna make like a notes file to when I'm leaving equipment here. Okay, so our presence is going up since we're using the, the staff. Oh shoot. The lights went out. Yeah, I assumed those other skeletons were gonna wake up, but I guess they did not. I wanna use this sword. 
Where were you, Sprite buddy? I needed you back there. Oh, it's a two-hander. Six damage, eight damage. I wonder what the unidentified qualities are. It only has one sigil slot. It doesn't seem amazing, amazing. Was it Clan Sandriders? I like it. Yeah, it's their heirloom. Should probably just bring it back to them. Was it guys we pissed off? No, those are Alzmita. Wait, where, where's Sandriders? Oh, they're right there. We could totally uh, stop by and drop this off. Cool. Let's do some diplomacy. You can parry with swords. This probably is pretty cool, especially if you get a few like sword skills. It only does 6 to 8 damage, and it only has 1 sigil slot. Even if I put a fire sigil in there, it counts as 2. Oh look, it went from night to day. Maybe that area is just always dark. Oh, that was indoors. No wonder. Okay. Even though it looked outdoors, which is a little weird. Alright, can we travel to this town? Heat, storm, heat. Already being punished. For ditching that, uh... <laughs> I can't eat yet. Punished for ditching that water skin, huh? Let's check out this new sword. Who's interrupting me? Some wolves? I parry the wolf. Let's see what happens when he attacks. Yeah, that didn't do anything. I think you can probably only parry weapons. We did identify it. It's excellent, so it's plus one damage. So it's actually seven and nine. My mace is 7 and 10. Yes, saying. It says other unidentified qualities, though. Actually, I actually really need to eat now. There's a ruin? Man, I want to I check out all these places. Oh, uh, we can stop at the cave on the way there? I'm down for that. Action healed. Uh, presence went down. We've just been traveling, keeping a low profile. A mud fisher pool. I do have some food, right? I have a turnip. And since I did keep my cooking gear, it'll heal us for 12, which is actually perfect. All right, I need to not use this sword though. I think it's wolves at least. Use a fire or a bedroll, or I'll gain cold. 
Um, I think I replenish my bread roll in town. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat. I'll have to cook it to restore 12. I don't have wood to start a fire, whatever. All right, well, not to leave too much of a cliffhanger, but this is a good stopping point. I just kind of wanted to, to rest here a minute for a minute. I don't know if that thing's gonna aggro us or how dangerous it's gonna be, but we'll stop here for now. That was a really cool little adventure and I feel like we're in a very nice position compared to where we started where I felt like we were just in like the edge of the earth and like the most inhospitable place. But um, I did get rid of all my turnips. We felt a lot better with the turnips, but we got that cool anti-fatigue berry thing, which I'm excited to, to see how that is. Something that doesn't take bulk and has like a really nice practical purpose just feels like a very powerful item. So I don't mind trading all those turnips and stuff for it. So we'll explore this cave. We'll hit up um, this town capital and then we'll jump over here to Stan Rider's town capital. We're gonna get, we actually have a gift that they're gonna want, which is pretty cool. We'll give them that sword. It's their family heirloom. They're gonna love it. And I don't like it because it doesn't kill wolves that good. Um, it, it might be a sweet sword otherwise, but I'll stick to my shield and mace for now. But yeah, we'll hold that there for now and pick this up later. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you all for the next episode. Thanks for watching.